Um, let's talk about big spaces versus small spaces. Uh, I think both of us work in suburban as well as in the city in Boston. Um, I think we both have opportunities to work on tiny little things uh, and big. And that's sort of from a square footage standpoint, but also budgets as well. What do you find is different about the way clients approach these two different projects and maybe even from an interior standpoint, the types of solutions and the approach? So in, in a way, the approach is, is pretty consistent, whether it's a single tiny bathroom or a very large home. Um, I would say what's consistent in working with both is that our design process is both very iterative, um, it's very collaborative, uh, meaning we go through many steps and stages from our conceptual design to design development and then of course implementation. Um, the differences I find are that, you know, for example, in a very small space, sometimes a single bathroom can be a much greater design challenge mm. than one huge family room, for example. And the reason being is that the intentionality and the way the design and architecture has to be implemented is, is critical because, of course, in a small space, you're going to notice everything. Right, right. Um, and, you know, all of the details, you know, for example, if it's a luxury bathroom and we're doing, you know, full porcelain slab, mm -hmm. the way those slab patterns have to meet up right. with the veining, for example, and the way the cuts of the stone have to be made, the, the intention and the details around how that stone is going to meet the window jam and all, all that stuff. Right, right. Um, and in fact, in that, it, I'm talking about a real project right. in that same small bathroom, but very beautiful and luxurious bathroom, um, we put in a very large rectangular niche in the back wall of the shower, but we lit it internally right. with a strip LED nice. light, so yeah. it really glows from within. So right. the whole bathroom feels extremely luxurious, but again, that's a very unique particular detail, and it had to be done perfectly right. um, because, you know, it was a confined space. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, equally, in, in large spaces, you know, sometimes you want to implement something that actually an, an area, a, a home theater, for example, or a seating area that actually has a more intimate feel, right. but you might be working with a lot of square footage. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, and then the challenge becomes, how do you incorporate this, this defined area within this much larger space and, and have the other surrounding spaces be equally intentional, equally fluid in conjunction to the look and the feel of the, the one defined space. Um, you know, I think a good example is uh, a recent basement renovation mm -hmm. for the homeowner. You know, basements are always challenging right. because of light levels or yeah. lack of light. Um, so what we did there, which was, you know, a brilliant partnership with the builder on site who said, you know, we can um, hollow out the window wells outside of these, you know, small windows, the mm -hmm. typical type you see in a basement, right. and actually create a... A, a deeper well that will allow us to put in a much larger window. So oh. all of a sudden we were able to flood the space with natural daylight, make it feel much more like a first floor level or a second floor level versus a basement level. Um, but again, because the space was 2,000 square feet, uh, we had to really <coughs> think through how is this going to work for the family? You know, how can we incorporate different areas of livability and functionality that, that's really going to make this a special, wonderful, multifunctional space. Um, so the ultimate solution ended up being a fabulous, very large home theater area with a projector and a movie-sized movie screen on mm -hmm. the wall, um, a beautiful built-in fireplace in that area, and then we did uh, a wonderful playroom with a climbing wall and all sorts of cool <laughs> features for the kids. And then we also had a gaming space with a pool table and some other games and then um, a beautiful bar area for the parents. Wow. So nice. um, really worked out well <laughs> for the whole family. And was that all sort of open or were you able to kind of close off areas, kind of create a bit of... So the, the whole, with the exception of um, we did designate some space for a large storage area okay. in that same level. And then the other area where we created some separation was the kids' playroom. Okay. Um, mostly so that, you know, when people were watching movies right. on the other side of that space, 
you know, we, they could close off the noise if the, if the kids were playing. Right, right, um, right. So what we did there, though, is to still have a connection point from a visual perspective and a sense of openness. We created very large um, sliding barn doors that were metal and glass. So right, you right. had the transparency right. and the ability to see into the, the spaces. But again, we, from a soundproofing perspective, could close it off. Right. That's nice. So, that's nice. Yeah. Well, I would, I'm sure my kids, uh, when they when they watch this, will really want the climbing wall. Oh, they, were, they will. Absolutely. <laughs> the giant barn door <laughs> in our project, which I don't think we've got the square footage for it. But, but I do, I mean, I do think that the, the idea that even the smallest spaces and, and the amount of details, I think the challenge to a certain degree is when somebody has a huge house and then they want that attention to detail in all of those different rooms and different places. I mean, it becomes yeah. such a huge project. And I think another piece that I've always found is clients, especially in, in the area they're working in, are limited in time, but there's so many decisions that they need to make as part of a custom home build or something of this quality. You know, do you find that it's a, a different type of engagement when you're working with the, the, uh, a client that's working with a huge house and you have to sort of almost prepare them for like, look, this is going to be a lot of decisions you have to make over a, a period of time? Yeah, there, there, there definitely is a, a preparedness that needs to be put in place and, and a, a conversation around that for sure. Um, you know, I think what's helpful is that um, we've been doing this such a long time that we, we really know the kind of information and sort of how to present it to, to our clients that will really help them navigate the process. And an important piece for us too is honestly making it fun. Right. right. Um, and there are so many details. And so, you know, we really, again, it goes back to that upfront period of time where we're spending a lot of time talking and listening and in conversation where, you know, we can really understand what the priorities are, what the style is, you know, again, what they hope for in terms of the vision. And at that point, that then allows us to really um, narrow the scope on those details mm -hmm. so that, you know, we pretty early on can get a sense of like, oh yeah, you know, we really want to use this kind of hardware right. or this kind of stone, or right, you know, right. we really want this to be open plan so right. that these two areas can be fluid. Right. Um, so it's all of those things. Um, and yeah, so again, sort of a design intent actually is fairly easily scalable right. in certain ways. Right. Um, but again, it's, it's really about that beginning, most critical process of saying, okay, you know, kind of what direction are we going here? Where do we want to be? Right. Um, and then it becomes not easy, but right, less yeah. challenging to, yeah. to scale it up over, you know, a very large space. Right, yeah, because there are things that can scale well in terms of the intentionality of the narrative and, you know, like you said, like colors and, and stones and textures that you want to carry through without having to, like, micro-design everything. Exactly, but, exactly. Yeah. What's, yeah. like, your favorite design detail from a recent project? Oh, that gosh. You would... um, I am fairly enamored with this this luxury bathroom even though you know a, a bathroom might not sound like the sexiest space but um hey we, I, we all spend I, I, plenty yeah, of time it was a in pretty them. sexy yeah. bathroom yeah, yeah. and um you know especially with this you know continuous fluid um veining pattern that we were able oh, to achieve right. from this gorgeous large format porcelain that right. um, was sourced from from uh, spain wow. and and then this you know incredible lit niche in in the shower right you know it just feels it feels very luxurious um and uh the homeowner loves it happily so, right most importantly <laughs> no that's great that's great well it sounds like an incredible place